Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and today we are going to be doing another retro analysis. And uh, after playing the demo for Resident Evil 4 Remake, I thought, hey, it will be interesting to see another of the old games that still don't have um, a remake for it and see how good they held on 2023. And so today we are testing Resident Evil 5, which this means at some point we're going to be testing Resident Evil 6. And of course, I'm going to be doing the technical analysis of the Resident Evil 4 uh, game when it comes out. So in the meantime, let's enjoy this one. So to begin with, I have to say that um, Capcom changed the scope of video games with Resident Evil 4. They um, made this game specifically for GameCube, and that was one of the biggest reasons to buy a GameCube at the time. Because honestly, what Capcom did was amazing. Um, you can argue that maybe the game started to go more towards um, action and so on, and that's fair. However, we have to accept the fact that there is a before and after Resident Evil 4, because they establish a lot of the things that are still being used in video games today. So, of course, there was going to be a lot of anticipation for Resident Evil 5 because it took four years for these games to come out, especially because it was on now the new generation of consoles, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. So everybody was obviously very, uh, had high expectation, myself included. Um, so, when this game came, came out, it blew my mind, at least from a technical perspective. I thought the graphics were amazing, they, uh, they were close to photorealism on some areas. Of course, now we can say, you know, the, all the mm, limitations of the time, but at the time it was really a sight to behold. However, um, as a game of his era, there are a lot of things that, you know, that you see now and you think, well, you know, this hasn't um, got... This has an H well. Sometimes it's so hard to find the right words, so I'm sorry for that. Um, so this game, uh, you, you can see the, some of the staples of the time. For example, um, you can see the co color palette that was established by Gears of War and many other games. Even the bad game, Batman game we tested tended to be this sort of brownies sort or of washout colors for some reason. They used to be like this. And that very bright white bloom that really, really was used at the time to convey like this sort of brightness, HDR thing. That when I see it today, I honestly don't like it. Um, but well, it, it was part of what was happening at the time. However, besides some of the trademarks of the time, we have to accept that the modeling and the texturization, the animation of the times were really, really good. Of course, I repeat, this is a game of its era. We have to understand this game came out in 2009. So yes, we have evolved a lot. Even when many people think we are not, looking back in time, we can see, yes, we have. So even playing this game at the best quality possible, 4K, 120, we can see that the um, many 1080p games nowadays looks much better than these uh, games of the past. But that doesn't mean they were not amazing at the time. So as I said, modeling and um, geometry texturization, it was great. However, it was light that was not very good. As you can see, many lights are not casting shadows or affecting the environment. And most of the light are placed, are baked, the shadows and everything. So that I think that's one of the... Uh, um, trademarks of the time, you know, you see that game and you realize and you know from what generation of um, it was because of these limitations that the uh, companies had to deal with. However, I think one one of the companies that was able to work better at the time uh, with this limitation was Capcom. Uh, during the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 era, I feel like many Japanese studios got behind the times like by a lot and that's when Western studios started to become more profitable with gaming and technology because the Japanese could not adapt so fast except for Capcom. They created this engine called MT Framework and I, I am not sure when it was first used, if it was, it was just an evolution of the uh, Resident Evil 4 engine or uh, it was a completely new uh, next generation engine. However, this was one of the best engines at the time and Capcom knew how to adapt to the times. They were at the top of their game, not like many other studios that you, they, they 
went behind the times just to mention a few Konami or uh, a Square for example um, Bandai Namco still couldn't you know the, their games look more like PlayStation 2 versions of the game but with a uh, high resolution while Capcom was really taking advantage of everything that new consoles could offer we know that they changed engine when uh, a Resident Evil 7 came out with the RE engine but this empty framework engine worked even for a Street Fighter 4 at the time so it was a very versatile engine and I think it looks quite good. So having said that, this is also where the game started to deviate a little bit. I'm going more towards the action and you can see this by seeing a game that is basically happening during the day and uh, you know where ammunition is uh, easier to find and instead of one or two zombies you find a lot of them. Talking about the limitation of light, you can see here that the, these candles don't produce any sort of light into the, uh, to the environment. And that is sort of what I was saying before. Um, so here in this scene, which is very good, by the way, uh, um, all things considered, you, you can see that they are um, bringing more like some sort of action, some sort of um, uh, walking death uh, kind of vibe before that was happening. You see this uh, on the broad daylight, lots of zombies, and you are supposed to just be running around and, um, you know, killing as much of them as you can. So it was a more mm, deviating more towards action, which we will see more happening when Resident Evil 6 comes, which caused a lot of division. However, Resident Evil 6 was one of the most sold Resident Evil of them all. So yeah, maybe in jump and they like more do action oriented we can see here some set pieces we say this is a military action so that's sort of what they were trying to bring to the table with this um with this video game as you can see in this scene on every single piece of shadow is baked into the ambient and you can see that there is no ambient occlusion on many areas meaning that they uh, were not created giving this sort of flat appearance to the whole thing where light is not coming through the windows it's all flat object seems to be a little bit floaty it's just because lightning at the time was not advanced as it is now and i think it's one of the most important things for graphics i will accept a game with less texture less uh, uh, geometry density but with a um, much better um lightning that's why i think ray tracing is so important because it's going to um, make things more believable and I know many people uh, don't uh, I always you know saying bad things about the technology or because right now it's not very performant but in a couple of years we're going to look back and see the beginning of ray tracing and see how it was the beginning of something that just brought the games to closer to be more realistic and with realistic I don't mean that they necessarily have to be fully realistic but that the way light interacts with everything even if it's trying to look like a, a Pixar movie is more believable I think that's very important because light creates this sort of disconnection between you and the characters you are seeing on the game However, at the time, we I don't know, it's like special effects. Many special effects look amazing at the time of movies, but when we look back at them, we see, wow, that looks so fake. So I guess it's something that we are starting to see and we grow up with, and then you we, we start just realizing how different they are. I, I'm not sure why, but I, I, I couldn't say that at the time I was able to say these things. And I think it's because... It's, you know things have evolved and now you look back at them and you see the, the the difference however as i'm saying the thing is that with this game even now you can say yeah, and see that it's a very attractive and very good looking game and on pc well it, it, it looks um and you can make it look at 4k so you, you have some advantages that you don't have on consoles because they were limited by the resolution of the time which is 720p in the best case scenario so right now we, you can have a better experience than you used to uh, on console and this is one of the things I like about PC the games grow with you so every time you buy a new piece of equipment or hardware you know the game is going to improve visually frame rate and um, resolution and in many cases even options that you cannot activate before because uh, like ray tracing let's say and now you can activate them because the hardware keeps uh, uh, evolving and you have a better computer which is not the case with consoles they stay the same forever unless the other you know like um, Microsoft introduces some sort of um, backward compatibility that is going to improve the game or so on but which doesn't happen uh, so often and it depends on a third party or somebody or the, even the creator of the game to want to introduce this um, so in, on PC this doesn't happen so that's one of the advantages and one of the reasons I 
I really like uh, and I consider PC to be my main platform of gaming. Even though I play on every single system there is, I have all the consoles, uh, and the, uh, the last con last generation, this generation, and many previous generations of consoles. So, I, I, because I, I love video games. So anyway, uh, coming back, uh, continuing with the game, you can see here. Um, you know a special effects like fire and everything look it's really good for the time even i will say that some of those effects look better than many of the games uh right now one of the things that uh this obviously doesn't have is any sort of interaction uh, uh, with elements of the scenery there is no like fixes or anything even though you can destroy like you saw right a little bit ago doors and other things but there is not many interacting things and that was also not the norm at the time well every last bit of budget was spent on actual graphics and not so much on physics another feature that the game brought at the time was the possibility to play two players on the same console it was normal for that time to play online with friends however capcom went a step further and joined the ranks of halo and other games that added a local cooperative play something that we have lost and nowadays the only way to play normal uh, uh, campaigns with another person is using um uh, online features unless you are a nintendo player which nintendo still gives a lot of thoughts to uh two players game having said all that obviously now i'm going to show you some performance numbers and well this is a 2009 game however we know some games are not very well optimized especially at that era on pc but right now this is a game i will say it will play perfect with any configuration you have the 120 FPS limit you see there is established by the game and, and you can see I'm using less than 100 watts of, of power of the RTX 1490 and I'm getting to the top there so I don't think anyone is going to have any issue whatsoever with any sort of reason hardware um, with reason I'm talking even like a 960 GTX 960 or equivalent so I don't think this is going to be a big problem so then I tested as usual with the Intel Arc A750 because well we know there is a lot of issues with all games but even even with this game, the ARC was able to um, achieve 120 FPS. Not all the times, it, you know, it jumped from 110 to 120 and maybe to 100, but it was normally right there at 1440p. And I think, well, it couldn't go over, but I think any, as I said, I didn't even test it with an RTX 2060 after checking this because I said, well, you know, if this is doing this well, any other car like a 26 is going to be able to play this game at 1440p 120 fps and probably even 4k 60 so that is not a big deal now uh, uh, as i normally used um, to do and close uh, my uh, technical analysis i tested on the steam deck a 1080p ultra with everything maxed out and you can see we're getting uh, close to 60 fps or 60 fps most of the time with some variations but nothing major and obviously if you're playing portable mode because the power is the same you're going to get um, a perfect lock 60 fps because you are going to be uh, playing at 720 or 800p so I, this is a game that will have no problems running on your steam deck if you are curious enough to try it so guys i hope you like this uh small little retro analysis video where we talk and so um you know some of the all games uh, of course when the final uh resident evil 4 game um is out i'm going to be testing it and bringing you my technical analysis and impression of the games but for the moment i thought it would be fun to just check an old glorious game at the time where you know the hd and 3d was still growing just to commemorate and relieve the past I hope you like this video and as always see you on the next one.